Okay, it's the last video for the Hamlet note. It's Act 5. Okay, so we talked about Hamlet's anagnoresis and peripatia, or the anagnoresis is a realization and peripatia is a turning point. So Hamlet um, is reconciled, he's realized um, and become okay with himself out of his suffering from his loss to acceptance that people die and that he'll probably die in the carrying out of this directive from the ghost. And it learns from his mistake of inaction. So in Act 5, Scene 1, um, we have two grave diggers and they're joking around about the burial of Ophelia. It's comic relief um, because they're saying how she's a noble woman and they're making jokes about her. Um, they didn't really know her. But it's comic relief, but it reminds us of the key idea here of mortality, that we're all going to die. <laughs> so Hamlet comes up to these grave diggers and looks at the skull and finds out that it belonged to the former court jester. Um, thinking about the skull, uh, this is the famous line, Alas, poor York, I knew him. And he's thinking about man's mortality, how all the skulls look alike can't tell one from the other and we all die so when he dies his skull is going to look just like the skull of the grave digger who's not even close to being a prince and he thinks about how you know even great men become dust Laertes arrives on the scene for the funeral of Ophelia and Hamlet and Laertes end up fighting physically in Ophelia's grave um, and this is the foreshadowing of what's to come, so keep that in your head. Um, and Hamlet represents intellect, right? He's a thinker. And Laertes represents passion. He's a doer, he, but he doesn't think before he acts. Um, and he's, they're both wrestling with the fact that they've both lost their fathers and they've both lost Ophelia, whom they both love very much. And so they're in a parallel situation. They get it under control and we move on to Act 5, Scene 2. One element of Hamlet's anagnoresis is his acceptance that fate um, is going to shape his future. And he says, there's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will. So it doesn't matter um, how we decide we want our end to come, there's a certain element of fate that guides us. We're fated to die, and we die. Um, he says something like, if, if it's to be now, it's going to happen. And if it's not going to be now, it's going to happen eventually. Um, life is meant to go a certain way, and there's no escape in the world, in the action of the play. We find out that on his way to England, um, he switched the letters from Claudius. So Rosencrantz and Gildan, or Hamlet carried a letter that said, um, kill the bearer of this letter, Hamlet. And he switches it up so that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are the ones bearing the letter. He writes a different letter. <sighs> and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are killed instead of Hamlet. Um, they shouldn't have betrayed him. <laughs> Osric um, comes in when we're finding all this out, and he's this rich but stupid guy. And he contrasts with how intelligent and wealth and wealthy Hamlet is, um, but Hamlet's richness, his wealth, uh, doesn't matter. He's educated um, and he understands that Osric is very different from him. Um, and Osric is the person who convinces Hamlet to engage in this duel with Laertes with the poison sword and the, um, the poison cup. And Horatio cautions Hamlet about this duel. Remember Horatio is all about philosophy, being concrete, and he reminds Hamlet that Laertes is an expert swordsman. Um, and Hamlet's response is um, evident of this anagnoresis, this realization that he's undergone, that death will come. And he says, there is special providence in the fall of a sparrow. Here's the line. If it be now, tis not to come. Right, so if it's now, it's not going to be in the future, it's going to be now. If it be not to come, it will be now. Right, so if it's not in the future, death is going to happen now. And if it be not now, yet it will come. Right, so if it's not now, death's going to come. The readiness is all. Since no man of aught he leaves knows what is to leave the times. Let be. Um, you, know, you don't know when you're going to go, um, so you, know, you, you need to be ready all the time. The readiness is all. 
Um, and Hamlet accepts life as a duel when he accepts this duel with Laertes. He knows that he's going to die. And so this final image of the play of Laertes and Hamlet fighting um, in Hamlet's fourth and final costume shows us that um, life is indeed a fight all the time. Hamlet's final costume is the dueling clothes showing that he's accepted that life is a fight, life is a battle. In a duel there are certain rules, there are certain limits, and you have to be willing to engage the opponent otherwise it's just a fight. Um, a duel represents this element of mortality that yes we can die, um, and in this case also the duel represents covering up the truth because we know, the audience knows, dramatic irony, that the duel is actually a deception. It's a corruption. It seems legitimate, but in fact, um, the duel is poisoned. And Hamlet has accepted death anyway, and so that's okay. So we get the duel between Hamlet and Laertes. Um, they're in parallel situations. They both have lost their fathers. They both have lost Ophelia. They're fighting each other. They're equal swordsmen. Um, and they both have partaken in deception and corruption. Um, and that we also know about the hidden poison. Um, and once Hamlet does fall, uh, once he's killed Claudius, forced him to drink, um, Hamlet's final words to the audience around him, Oh, I could tell you. Um, there's, there's so many things that he could tell. And when I say the audience, I don't mean us. I mean the people around him. Um, the people watching the sword fight. Oh, I could tell you. You know, he could tell them so much about Claudius. He could tell them about Gertrude and the the ghost. But he can't because he's about to die. Um, his final words to Horatio: "Tell my story." Um, he wants Horatio to let the people know what happened, to be his voice when he's dead. And the final words to all: um, "The rest is silence. Some things never get told. Um, Horatio doesn't know everything that's gone on, and." Um, you know, some things are going to remain secret and die with Hamlet. Fortinbras comes in. Um, you know, we talked about the peaceful march through Denmark that Fortinbras' uncle asked for. Well, not so peaceful after all. Fortinbras has taken over. He walks into this just room full of bodies. You know, you've lost um, Gertrude, and you'll see that in class when we watch it. Um, Gertrude, Claudius, Hamlet, Polonius, Ophelia. Laertes, all of these people have died, um, and more. Osric dies, and Fortinbras treats Hamlet's body with respect. He walks in and, and realizes, you know, Prince Hamlet, we need to treat him with respect, place him high on a stage um, in the view. This is kind of long here on the end, but Hamlet is honored as a soldier, a hero who will fight with honor. Um, the Greek word for honor is kleos, and he comes through his own loss and his own thinking and his own fall, and he realizes that man is mortal. Um, he pur Hamlet purges his land of the corruption, of the unweeded garden. Remember, the garden is a symbol of purity, of innocence. Um, and Hamlet purges, he gets rid of the sin of Claudius and Gertrude. He suffers and dies, um, and he taints himself in the process. He he kills on the way to purity. He confronts the evil, and um, he falls. He suffers and dies so that we can understand man's mortal condition, that man will die eventually. Hamlet dies in order that we can understand, that we can see. Fortinbras acts as a reordering principle. He brings back harmony to Denmark, and overall Denmark is better through the tragic loss, the suffering, and the reconciliation. Hamlet is our tragic hero. He's flawed with his inaction, but he restores the kingdom, and he gets rid of evil um, that Claudius started with the murder and, and um, adultery. And, you know, one last thing here that, I don't know, even it takes, I don't know what I meant by that, but, um, oh, yes I do. Even though it takes certain approaching death for Hamlet to finally kill Claudius, you know, Hamlet realizes that he's going to die, that he's drink of the cup, no, no, not drink of the cup, that he's uh, been poisoned by the rapier, being, you know, being stuck by the rapier, um, the sword. He realizes he's been poisoned, and that is what it takes for Hamlet to finally act and kill Claudius, but um, he does it, 
but it takes you know, quite a bit for him to do so. Um, anyway, hope you've enjoyed it, and see you in class.